Welcome to Solutions with Courtney Anderson. Today's show is part of our series, Law Lovers Lounge. And this, is, of course, is a show where we focus on how much we love the law. Law, the rule of law, the ideas that, that are enshrined in a, in a functioning legal system of equality, justice for all, equal treatment under the law. Uh, this is just so exciting. And, of course, it's our lounge because we're just having a casual um, general education discussion. And I just, again, my disclaimer, uh, although I am an attorney, I am not your attorney by virtue of your participation in this program. Uh, only people who have hired my my law firm and myself as their lawyer with a signed written contract um, are my legal clients. So this is, again, general educational information, and this is something that I, I selected as a show topic uh, because it, it comes up a lot and it's one of those things that most people in life never really deal with and then when it comes up it's sort of sudden and it's an emergency and uh oh what do we do how do we handle this and so our topic today is how do I hire a criminal defense attorney and that may seem like a silly like a silly topic. I mean, a lot of people would say, well, what do you mean how do I hire a criminal defense attorney? Um, I go look on the Internet and put in criminal defense attorney, and then I click on the ones that are either in my area or seem like they would be able to help me, and I hire them. And that's part of it. But bigger picture than that is, what are you trying to accomplish? As every program that we do and everything that we uh, put together, we always focus on how can we surpass our goals. And our goal when we hire a criminal defense attorney usually is to fix this criminal allegation. And by fix it, um, either get it dismissed, make it go away, uh, set up a system where if, if, if the person, you know, pays some fines or takes some classes or, you know, stays out of trouble, that it's, that it's um, you know, effectively uh, dropped or dismissed. Uh, that's what we want. We want no criminal record, ideally. Now, one of the things that is a little bit challenging with this show is I've been through the real-life experience of learning that everybody is different when it comes to our criminal uh, defense attorney needs. And from an anecdotal perspective, I, I will share this. So I started my law firm uh, in Texas uh, in 1998. So that's the year. We're back in a time machine. It's 1998. What a year. What a fabulous year. And so there I have my little law firm. And um, I'm in my 20s. So I'm a little bit younger, a little bit younger than I am now. And I got out and I started handling my first um, criminal defense case. So someone hires me because, uh oh, oh my goodness, um, you know, they've been arrested. And so I immediately started to think about the outcomes that I would desire in a criminal case, which would be the ones I just mentioned, uh, to get this entire thing taken care of, meaning it's, it's, I have no criminal record um, and that I am not facing any type of uh, undue hardship in terms of the, the punishment or fines or classes or whatever the requirements are to make this, this case go away. I want to ensure that I never have to answer on a job application um, that I've been convicted of a, of a felony. I want to make sure that there's no um, problem in my future with opportunities, whether it's jobs, uh, housing, uh, anything. I don't want. I don't want a record. I don't want a record saying I did a bad thing because, of course, if it's me, me Courtney Anderson, then I haven't done a bad thing. Uh, so I don't want to make sure that's clear. And I, I want to have all my rights, all of my rights, uh, legally, and all of my rights as a, as a citizen in society, voting, everything. I, I'm not even contemplating uh, changing uh, the type of lifestyle I have. And so I go out into the world, and I'm, I'm handling my, my first criminal case, and I'm coming from that perspective, right? My perspective is I'm going to, you know, my job is to get this thing dismissed, to get this get this thing. If I can't get it dismissed, that means that the government has charged you, alleged that you committed a crime, and then at some point thereafter, they actually drop that, that, that allegation. Um, and if they do that... Um, then, then it, then we don't have any more criminal case, right? And uh, ideally, uh, we want them to uh, drop the, the dismiss this charge where they can't refile it, where they're not able later to to bring the same claim again. And so, 
here we are, and I'm out, and I'm talking to my, my client, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to get the, the case dismissed. And what happens in real life is often when you're, when you're uh, hiring a criminal defense attorney, uh, the criminal defense attorney is, is, again, initially using their own life experience to determine what the best outcome is. And I forgot one of the basic rules of being an entrepreneur at this time, which is what does my customer want? You know, I was totally focused on what I thought was the sort of the, I hate this term because it, it's so ineffective, but the, you know, common sense. Common sense would tell you that, you know, I thought if I'm going to hire a criminal defense lawyer, I want them to make this whole thing go away permanently. You know, no record, no, no, no lingering after effects, nothing. But I wasn't remembering that as an entrepreneur, which is what you are when you own your, your own little small businesses. <laughs> what does your customer want? What does the client want? And so I, I got all enthusiastic, and I'm, I'm coming to my client, and I'm telling them, here are all the things that they're going to need to, to do. To, and then when they do these things, the case will be dismissed, which I thought was the greatest thing ever, right? I thought that's what you, you want is to get this thing dismissed. But the requirements to get it dismissed were things like um, you can't, you know, reoffend within, you know, the next 12 months. Uh, you have to take some classes. Uh, let's say that it was, uh, and I don't even remember what type of specific case it was, but you know, for many types of criminal allegations, part of agreeing to dismiss a case, uh, the, the government will say, okay, we'll dismiss it if these conditions are met. And the conditions almost always are. You have to, the person can't be rearrested uh, on, on any charges for a certain amount of time. So they'll basically say, hey, we'll dismiss this case in you know, six months or 12 months or 24 months or, you know, a time period. Okay, so they'll say, we'll dismiss it in 12 months. If in that time frame the person has not had any other criminal allegations, right? Uh, in addition to that, uh, if it's, a, a, if it's a, a person who supposedly wrote a bad check and, in, and, and before the uh, online payment system that we have now and using your, your mobile phone to pay for, for things and the ability to use these sort of, you know, debit cards, and credit cards at every store with a little machine, you just sort of swipe it. That's all relatively new. Before that, a lot of people had you paid cash or people wrote checks. And checks used to be really common. That was like one of the most common things people did to pay for things at the, at the store, at the gas station. People just used checks. And so you had a, a problem where people would write a check. And then when the check was presented for payment, then the funds were not available. Either the account was closed or the account had insufficient funds, and then the person who was due the money is sitting here holding a check, and they need their money, and then they can bring criminal charges against that person, and uh, the person can be arrested. The person can be arrested for, for bad checks, right? And so one of the requirements would be, for instance, if they were going to dismiss a case like that, okay, you're going to wait a certain amount of time, let's say it's 12 months, and then during that time you can't have any other criminal uh, uh, charges and you also have to take a class uh, a class on on you know whatever basically a class on don't write bad checks and so the the government will say when the person you know brings us proof that they attended you know this class for this many hours you know that these approved people teach and uh, they don't get arrested again then at the end of that 12 months we'll we'll make sure that they finish their class and usually they also ask for some sort of fine or payment the person has to make um and then at the end of 12 months, if they did all those things, then the, the case is dismissed. So I would look at those and be like, oh, those are great, you know, terms. You, you pay a little fine, you take a little class or two, uh, you don't get in any more legal trouble, and then it's dismissed. I thought that was a good outcome. And it would be if I was the client. <laughs> the challenge is that I was not the client. I was the service provide the professional service provider and I wasn't thinking about the fact that this is not about me right I thought I thought that horrible cliche again it's just I thought oh it's common sense wouldn't everybody want this outcome no they don't so what happened in real life is I was all excited enthusiastic and I go to my client and I say okay here's the deal you're gonna you know stay out of trouble for this amount of time no no more arrests or problems you're gonna take these classes and pay these fines um and your case will be dismissed. And I'll add that for a lot of criminal uh, offenses, in addition to the classes, so they have classes on don't write bad checks, they have classes on, uh, you know, anger management for a lot of people who have uh, domestic violence and other type of assault cases. They have classes on um, substance abuse, um, 
you know, choices, making better choices um, so you don't abuse, you know, alcohol and or drugs, prescription or, or illegal. They also usually will have requirements if it's something to do with uh, substances in addition to the class that the person has to uh, agree to take drug tests uh, and or uh, put an alcohol ignition device, which is basically a, a device you put on your car so that you can't uh, drive your vehicle without blowing into this little device, and the device is supposed to measure and see if there's any uh, alcohol um, that would impair someone driving. So basically, if you ideally, they, if you're if you're um, in, an impaired driver and you blow into the little ignition interlock device, it won't you can't drive your car. That's the idea. All right, so people would agree to you know basically take their classes on whatever the class was: anger management, you know, um, parenting, uh, substance abuse, um, hot check writing. Whatever the classes are, pay some fines, uh, stay out of trouble. In some instances, agree to drug tests, whatever. And then, and then a certain amount of time, you do all these things, and you don't have any other offenses, and your case is dismissed. So I'm again thinking this is great. And my, I do remember the first client, although I don't remember the specific nature of the charges at this time. But they did tell me I don't want this, <laughs> and I, I thought I was, you know, not hearing them correctly. But what their point was is that. They started to explain to me. You know, they were like, "Look, I don't have a vehicle, so for me to get to all these classes, you know, and 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 if I had to, you know, and meetings and drug tests and all this, I can't do that. It's inconvenient. I don't have a car. I don't have a way to get there. Um, you know, I'm not going to be the one that's going to be able to to make that happen." And then they started to explain to me that that you know, they're, if they had to get on the bus, they don't have the bus fees, and that the bus doesn't come where they are right now, and they don't even actually have anywhere to stay, and they were staying with you know, a friend, but that friend kicked them out, and, you know, so, and and then the fees, the little, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, you can pay those fees, you know, you can spread it out, you know, in little payments over time, but their argument was they can't pay it at all, and I started to listen, and I, and I realized, A, the horrible mistake I made as a business person, and then B, um, that at that point, I did not understand what a criminal defense lawyer does. My job as a professional um, service provider, as a, as a lawyer, is and as a as a consultant, is to listen to the client. What does the client want? What's the client's goal? And I made all these assumptions. You know that oh, going to meetings, paying little fines was easy. You know, not having a, a problem with being arrested was easy. Taking little classes was easy. I wasn't thinking. You know, what is that person's life like? If you don't have anywhere permanent to live and you don't have any money and you don't have a vehicle and you don't have any access to funds for a bus pass and you don't have any access to funds to pay fees, then all of it is just is too much. There's no way that that person is going to be able to do all of that. And it was a powerful lesson. One of the things in, all, in our programs uh, that I put together that I focus so much on is being pragmatic, is, is dealing with you know the world as it is. And I didn't understand sort of the diversity of how people live their lives. And I just started thinking about how I live my life. And that is a fatal error. It, it was it was it was not based in reality and it was inappropriate. So when you when you look at how do you hire a criminal defense attorney, you have to under, you have to look at what your outcome is. Because there are different types of professionals who cater to different types of outcomes. And that is the key when you're hiring a criminal defense lawyer. And I learned, again, this very powerful lesson. It's not about me. It's about my, my customer. I need to listen. I need to understand other people's motivations and their goals and to help them achieve and exceed their goals, not my goals, because they are not, they're not me. I'm me. So when you look at hiring a criminal defense lawyer, it depends on what you want. Broadly, you have option one, which is what I've been sharing that I personally thought was the sort of a universal norm, which is not. But that's the idea of I want this totally erased. No record. I want to be able to, you know, answer everything truthfully the rest of my life, you know, that I've never been convicted of a crime. Um, I don't want this to come up. <laughs> Background checks. I don't, want, I don't want any type of issue. Now, I will mention it depends on the reality of what type of, of background check someone is being exposed to. Being arrested for something doesn't doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. It doesn't mean anything. Um, it just means that, that there was an allegation that you might have done something. That's why it's just an arrest. And that's why legally you're not really 
you're not really, you're not allowed to in the United States and in many parts of the world to ask if you've been arrested for something because it doesn't mean anything. I could be arrested for something it wasn't even me. It could have been somebody else, had the same name, who knows? But that doesn't mean anything. Now, being convicted of something, a conviction means that you 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 were found guilty. You were either found guilty in, 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 in a court by a, a, what they call a, a trier of law, whether it's a judge or a jury, right? They found you guilty, or you pled guilty, right? That means you signed some paperwork and said, yeah, I did it, I'm guilty. There's also an instance where you can sign paperwork and say, I'm not saying I'm guilty, but there but there might be enough evidence where other people would convict me. It's called an Alfred plea in the U.S. There's other another instance where you sign a piece of paper and say, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying I'm guilty. I'm not saying I'm not guilty. I'm not saying anything. I am I'm not contesting this. And and that's called uh, uh, a no contest or no low contendere. So when you're looking at how to hire a criminal defense attorney, you have a couple of, of really important things. Option one is what do you want as an outcome, right? So if you want this to, to go away, no record, things of that nature, that's one path. If what you want as an outcome is different, you know, let's people who have um, criminal experience with the system, in other words, they've, they've been, you know, convicted of crimes, they've served times in, you know, in, in jails or prisons, they have a totally different outlook on things. And it tends to be, as I was sharing with my anecdote with my first client where I learned the embarrassing, it was embarrassing and painful lesson of being a, a better um, person, being a better listener, being a better business person. Uh, it's about your client. So basically the client had told me they couldn't take the classes and get the transportation and pay the fees and, and whatnot. What they did talk to me about was that they would prefer that they would go – it in lieu of all of that, that they would go ahead and plead no contest and they'd rather just go and sit in the local jail for a couple of days. And and what they and the term that they use is they lay it out. And what that means is the government will come to you and say, look, option one is you you know, you stay out of trouble for all these months, you pay all these fines, take these classes, you know, drug testing and then we might you know, we'll dismiss it. We'll, we'll agree to that. Um option two often is if 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 you're not going to do that, the person can plead no contest. And I think just psychologically people like no contest. I don't really get it, though, because it it really has no effect on on the outcome, right? Um, you know, you plead no contest, but the reality is you're, you you agree to accept the, the, the punishment. So it, it's going to function as a, you know, as a, as a conviction. And I don't know why people would agree to that when they don't. They don't have to, but everybody's different. So what that first client said to me basically was, look, I'm going to go ahead and take a plea on this of no contest, and then I'm just going to – I want the least amount of days, and I want to lay it out. And what they meant was sort of what it sounds like, that, that you know, the government will say, okay, look, you plead no contest, which means I'm not saying I did it, I'm not saying I didn't do it, I'm not, I'm not contesting it. And then the government basically takes that as, okay, then you did it, here's the punishment. And the government will say, okay, so we'll sentence you to 30 days in county jail. But the reality is 30 days does not mean 30 days and nights in real calendar time because there's overcrowding and there's and there's there's rules in all these institutions and all these systems about, you know, um, for every day you serve that you get – you can get extra time, like credit for that day, even though it might be one day. Maybe you're, you had, you're a good time. You, you followed the rules and, and things of that nature, and so maybe it was only one real day in a calendar, but you got credit for three days. So people don't – if you get 30 days, you're not going to serve 30 days. You may get 30 days and only serve, you know, three or four days, um, depending on how crowded they are, depending on how your service is, is calculated, things of that nature. So people know that who have experience with the criminal system like this first client did. And so basically he was saying to me, give me, you know, the least amount of days, and then I'll just go lay it out, which means – which is sort of slang, I guess, for I will literally go to the place, the, the jail, and lay there because that's kind of what you do in jail. I mean they have, you know, meals and, and activity time and – and if you are in some place for a long time, then you know they'll have more formal work schedules and everything. But basically, they, the person says, "I'll just go sit in that place, you know, the jail for a couple of days. I'll lay it out. I'll just wait the time out. And then when the few days are over, this whole case goes away. And I don't have to worry about staying out of trouble for 12 months. I don't have to worry about going to take a class. I don't have to worry about um, paying a fine or anything. I've done it all. I went and sat in the place or laid. That's what they call it. Laid it out for a few days, and the whole thing is done. This whole case is over. And the benefit to that is a, you don't have to worry about the cost and the stress of trying to go to the classes and pay the fines. The other part is then your legal fees are really low. You know, you're not having to ask the lawyer to go back to court and negotiate a plea or anything. You're just saying, look, if you if you can get them to agree to this right now, I'll I'm I you know, I'll agree to it. So, when you go to hire a criminal defense attorney, 
what do you want? The first part is what do you want? If you're, if, and usually the person who's actually hiring a criminal defense attorney, usually, not all the time, but usually it's not the person who actually is charged with the crime because that person's in jail. Usually it works like this. Everybody's going about their regular day, and then somebody gets a probably a text message or a phone call or something. Oh, my goodness, it's me, your relative or best friend or boyfriend or girlfriend or granddaughter or whatever, and I'm in jail, and here's the jail you know, where I am. And then that person is the one who jumps up and runs around trying to find a criminal defense lawyer, usually, because they're they're sort of panicked and there's an urgency. I need to get that person out of jail. Um, so the first thing is, what do you want? So if you want to, as we talked about, sort of make this thing go away, no record and everything, then that's going to have, it's going to require more steps. Because then that means initially I need to get the person out of jail now. Or I, the lawyer needs to do what they can to, to speed up getting that person out of jail right now. And then the lawyer needs to set on the calendar in court uh, the case so that we can move forward. And you're, when I say move forward, the, the lawyer basically is going to move the case forward toward trial. And, and you're going to – and the lawyer simultaneously, as, it's, as, it, as the case is on the calendar, the, the lawyer is trying to see if they can get a better agreement from the government, you know, the agreement where the person stays out of trouble for a couple months, pays the fine, takes a class, you know, takes a drug test if that's part of it, and then the case is dismissed. That's what the lawyer is trying to get to. But often the government won't come initially to the defense lawyer and offer that. They'll, they'll first time they'll usually offer something much more serious. You know, they'll come and say, okay, the person will agree to go to jail for six months, pay a two thousand dollar fine uh and then the lawyer says well no we, you know well they say i'm going to talk to my client and, and you know their or their clients already given them authority to 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 deny something of that nature and then they'll say okay then we'll just set it for trial and so that what that means is that they put it on the court calendar moving toward trial and then and then each time you go to court you get closer and closer to, to the trial then the government has an opportunity to make a different offer or what they call a rec or a recommendation and so Typically, how it works is the closer and closer you get to trial, the closer the recs will get to what the defense attorney is looking for. And if they if they if it matches up at some point, then the defense attorney accepts it, and then the case moves off the trial docket and onto the fact that it's been it's been we reached a plea agreement uh, for this you know for this for this dismissal. In some in some states, it's a it's a deferred uh, prosecution. The idea is that we'll put off prosecuting this case for whatever the six months or twelve months, and if the person meets all the requirements, you know, stays out of trouble, takes the classes, pays the fines, then we'll just dismiss it at that time, um, and or deferred adjudication. Uh, so the idea is that all that happens simultaneously, but each time the lawyer goes to court, then the lawyer has a charge, you know, their hourly rate, and then they have to charge the fees that it t takes them to, you know, prepare for you know, negotiating with the with the prosecutors and, and everything. And, and and also if the if you're if you are planning to go to trial, then the lawyer really is stepping up all their, you know, research and preparation on the case. You know, I need to find out what happened, I need to have, you know, witness reports, I need to go to the, the scene and do an, an investigation there. I might need to hire uh, an investigator. You know, I'm preparing for trial. So what do you want is the first question. The second question that dovetails with that is exactly related to what I was talking about. If you say you want the lawyer to make it go away, the lawyer's going to do everything in their power, if that's their expertise, to, to, to try to make that happen. But it costs more money because it just takes more time. You know, and every single time the lawyer's got to go to court on some of these cases. And some of these cases, the lawyer may go to court, you know, you know, 8, 10, 15 times, you know, over a year or two years, depending on how long it's, you know, it's, it's in the system and how many other cases there are. Um, so every time the lawyer is going to court, it's costing more money. And if you're telling the lawyer that you want that lawyer to get ready for trial, the trial, of course, is where you're not pleading anything other than not guilty, which is what you originally pled. And you're going to make the government prove their case, which is the whole crux of the criminal justice system. Government's accused you of doing something illegal, I mean, an allegation against you. And the paperwork in criminal cases reads the, 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 whatever part of the government it is. So it'll say the state of Texas or the state of Nevada versus Courtney Anderson. That's why the defense attorney represents the defendant. That's the person against the entire government. If it's a federal case, you know, the United States of America versus Courtney Anderson. That's a that's powerful. So if you so ideally, if you don't plea and work these cases out, then the defense attorney is going to go to trial. And at the trial, it's, it's the part that's what you see on TV that makes makes it look like it could be kind of interesting to be a lawyer because trials are interesting because it's, it's all unknown. You know what will happen. 
you know, especially if you have a jury, you know, you don't, um, because you can have a jury, or in some instances you get a bench trial. Bench trial is the judge, and judge judges the jury. You don't have actual additional people in there. The judge listens and the judge makes a decision. You get to elect that in most circumstances. So the the if you go to trial, then the government has to prove their case. They said you did this bad thing and I'll allege these things, right? Now prove it. Put on your case. And in criminal cases, uh, typically the standard is that the the the, the plaintiff, the prosecutor, the government has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you did these things. Prove it. Now, I want to be really clear about this. Um, in the U.S., it varies court to court, but in general, the average is somewhere around 90% of cases do not go to trial. That means they're, they're dropped, they're dismissed, um, or there's a plea. And the plea could be either what we talked about earlier where somebody lays it out, meaning that you pled, whatever, no contest or whatever, but and then you actually you know, were punished, and it's going to be a conviction on your record. Um, the, the reality is that very few cases, at the, you know, somewhere around 10%, across the whole nation, so in some courts it's really tiny, it's going to be a lot less than that. It might be 98% of cases you know, um, uh, you know, are pled out or, or, or dropped. Um, so it's a, it's a tiny percent of cases that go to trial. So if you want to do that, if you want to do that, then it's going to just cost more time and more money. And usually when, when you're looking at how to hire a defense attorney, then you're looking at those those factors. What do you want and how much do you want to spend? People who have a f- financial means you know, and resources, I handle you know, clients like that as a lawyer, they're really clear usually about what they want. So you know, I have people who are pretty wealthy. Um, maybe they had a, a family member, who, you know, a younger family member who, who had problems. Uh, criminal charges, they'll say to me, I don't, you know, I really, you know, they'll either say I don't care what it costs, or they'll say, you know, here's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a, I'm, I have, you know, whatever, X amount of dollars, I'll fifty thousand uh, dollars, and that's, that's all I'm going to pay. Um, but that's still a lot of money, and relatively speaking, depending on the charge, and it gives the lawyer the ability to say, okay, fine, then we're going to run, we're going to get this thing ready, like we're going to trial, and I'm not going to take anything other than exactly what we want in terms of a plea. And if it's not exactly what we want, then let the government prove it. The thing about going to trial is it's so rare, right? It happens very rarely. When the when you look at how to hire a criminal lawyer, you need to know ideally up front what do you want. If you really do want to go to trial, you need to find a criminal lawyer in your area that does go to trial. This is a rare occurrence because statistically it just doesn't happen that much so it needs to be somebody who goes to trial and goes to trial pretty frequently or goes to trial enough that that you feel comfortable that that that, that they've gotten good outcomes and you can see that in the media you can you know most law, lawyers and law firms will have it in their own uh, you know marketing materials and, and law firm information you know their their verdict or their their trials because they want you to know but you need to understand that's rare Right, so if you get ten lawyers, maybe one of them really goes to trial that much, and 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 less than 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 one one of them is the one that's you know really experienced and wins. So you need to know up front. You cannot expect to go hire the lawyer who doesn't go to trial, has never gone to trial, and doesn't want to go to trial. That's even a different part. A lot of times lawyers want to go to trial. I would love to go to trial all the time because I love that part. It's the talking part. It's the performing part. It's the interesting part. You know, It's where I kind of excel. Those are my skills. But the reality is you just don't get it that much. Um, so usually the lawyers who have a lot of trial experience are, you know, they've been doing it for decades just because that's how long it takes you to get that kind of expertise. Because the average day-to-day case doesn't go to trial, and everybody knows that. It's just, the, it's just the odds of it. So if you want to go to trial and you want to hire a criminal defense lawyer, you're going to have to pay a lot of money, and they're going to charge you a lot of money. You're going to go to one lawyer who's really experienced who goes to trial, and they may tell you that the retainer, that's you sign a contract, and the down payment that they'll take, they may say to you, my retainer is you know, $100,000 cash. And you may find another lawyer who says, look, I do criminal cases. I'll take $200 down. In the whole case, I'll do it for, you know, $600. Now, that's a huge spread, $600 to $100,000, but that sort of tells you the diversity of their experience. If you hire low-cost lawyers who advertise on cost, it's just like anything else. It's like going to the dollar store. If you go to the dollar store, you're not going to go to the dollar store and buy something that's a dollar and then think it's Neiman Marcus. You're not going to get that kind of service or, or, or quality because look at the price point. So if you if it's one of those things where you have limited resources or you really only want to invest a certain amount in this situation, then hire the low cost lawyer. But then don't turn around and and demand that that low cost lawyer who 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 has has 
been very upfront with you that it's, if you want more service, you're going to have to pay more. You don't pay, you know, the bare minimum fee and then get the, the trial of the century. You'd have to come up with more money. So know what you want. Research the lawyer to see what their experience is. The lawyer that has a lot of, um, you know, high media appearances, a lot of expertise, you know, they're going to cost a lot more. The lawyer who advertises and says, you know, call me, I'll take $75 down, it, you're kind of getting what you pay for. Not that they're not a good lawyer. And most of the time you have to understand all they, they're going to do is get a plea. And depending on the circumstances, if you're willing to, quote, lay it out, if you're fine with that, then don't you don't need to go spend a whole bunch of money because you're, you're not going to want to go to trial anyway, most likely. You just want to get this thing over with now and you, and you want to move on with your life and you don't mind a conviction. But all of this is about being re real with yourself and honest with yourself. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, you can come to CourtneyAnderson.com for more information. Thank you.